sit down again. Um, we will now have Peter Moyer from the CEU, um, kind of summarizing, commenting in an artistic way on what we have been discussing. And I don't know what's going to happen. Um, ten minutes roughly, then I will kind of uh, summarize ten, ten more minutes, and then we have a final round of discussion. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Maria, and, and thank you, Sophie, and all others, and who put this together and for giving me this opportunity to reflect on the subject with some slam poetry. and. Uh, I will tell three poems uh, and uh, in the third one I will ask your participation. So this is the first. The leaves of beautiful trees. People are walking another morning. What are they doing? Are they, they dreaming? Here is a woman, she's lost in her mind talking to a man. Never, never mind. Here with my love, it's so much easier to write about love than about hate. Do you think that a warm smile can shine through prejudice and hate? You say that you cannot tell your parents that you are dating me because I am a non-violent human rights activist. Could you tell them that I am a gypsy or a Jew? Could you tell them that I am a Muslim? Could you tell them that I am a refugee? Could you tell them that I am a migrant? What would they say if I had brown or black skin? What would they say if I were an atheist? What would they say if I had a nose so much different from yours? Would your people punish you more for your own sacred love if you were a girl? Would they burn you as a witch? Would they cut your hair or stone you to death? What would your people do to you if you were gay? My people? I'm not sure about my people. What would they say if I was one of those whom they animalize, plantize, dehumanize? When you say it's so human, you mean hatred of the other, you mean cruelty and darkness, you mean fear of freedom, or you mean sharing respect, you mean learning from the other, you mean joyful light, you mean freedom from fear. What would they say if they knew that we made love? What would they say if they knew that I wanted you to fuck me? What would they say if they saw that we are so different? Would they understand that we are the same? Same as the water in the river and the leaves on beautiful trees. As people on the New York subway, what would they think and what would they say? The second, for the second poem, I would like to ask you to imagine two black and white pictures, one about my father and the other one about Paul Robson, the African-American actor, athlete, singer and human rights activist next to each other. A black and white picture on a black and white person. And I would like to dedicate this poem to an African-American friend of mine who was a student at CU and as a student a member of the Senate at CU and we have been doing uh, slam poetry together and uh, Philip once was dehumanized in Budapest last summer by an anti-immigrant racist as a monkey and in response, in her performance, he imitated the racist uh, person as a monkey, playing a monkey on the stage himself, and it became big controversy. He was criticized that he hated himself. He fiercely rejected the criticism, and understanding his legitimate frustration, I largely agreed with him, and also for other reasons. So this is for Philip with huge respect. And I just mentioned that he has ironic lines in his own slam poetry like I am black, almost trauma. If you are racist, I give you coma. <laughs> <laughs> they 
should have imagined that Philip is violent as a black man must be. But then they notice that instead of violence, he's got his violin, fragile instrument, so much European, so sophisticated. Then they so find his black, certainly plays jazz, although he also plays Mozart. You see how similar Paul Robson and my father, singing Old Man River, look like. Two deep voiced guy, three men, singing Old Man River. Two wise broad rivers whisper stories to Daniel and the Mississippi. Do you see that the skin of my father is darker? I mean too dark to be white. Is it just an old picture? Or was there a gypsy in our family? Paul Robson and my father singing on the river singing about skin color by my great grandmother dealing with the shape of her Jewish nose. Are we free to change the color of our skin? Are we free to paint over part of our nose? You can baptize the day before your marriage as my great grandmother did. I am, aren't you still Jewish? You can be the first girl who graduated from high school in your town as my great grandmother did in Sabatka. Aren't you still woman? The sister of my great grandmother and her husband were shot to the Danube in January 1945. What would they say if they heard that the current chairman of the Hungarian parliament said in fall 1990 when cab drivers blocked bridges over a broad river that they should be shot to the Danube? Paul Robson and my father were singing about human rights. History got into the deep voiced eyes of these two free men, singing Old Man River in English and in Hungarian. Paul got blacklisted in the McCarthy era. Wait, how is it when a black man gets blacklisted? Black men have been always blacklisted. My father was born into a six children Catholic family and often said, I'm not the servant of anyone. He died six years before Shine in 1989. He did not hear when one of his sisters at the family Christmas in 1990 objected to voting for the Liberal Party saying, but those are the Jews. But I heard it, and she was not the only one. So it was not such a big news when in 2009 in New York, an anti-Semitic and anti-Hungarian immigrant, when I challenged her prejudices, asked me about how much Jewish blood I have, and my Jewish-Hungarian great-grandmother decided to show up there, the racist fellow Hungarian told me, tell me one like Barack Obama. I was more surprised when I heard in a party of a dance choreographer also in Manhattan about Obama who was portrayed in a New York Post caricature as a monkey that he has white values. So who's white and who's black? And if Barack is a monkey, I'm also a monkey. Am I getting crazy about this, speaking through my homeless looking bear? Or you also see how similar Paul Robson and my father look like two deep boys like three men. Seeing Old Man River for human rights, seeing about skin color and the Mississippi where niggers in these lines of the soul, niggers all work on the Mississippi, niggers all work while white folks play, was first changed to darkies, then to colored folks, then to we all. Paul Robson and my father, two deep boys like three men, seeing Old Man River, seeing about freedom to love at the Danube, where a non-Roma girl may not tell her parents if she's got a Roma boyfriend as her parents would not tolerate that. Paul Robson and my father, two deep boys like three men, seeing Old Man River, their voices join forces. And I get not the fact, but the truth, the simple truth that they have been brothers. And uh, so this, is, this, this will be the last one, the third one, and, and here I ask your participation. It will be simple, but it, I ask you to sustain it. I, will, I ask you that when I raise my hand, please say in your own language, equal. And with a determination that what is at stake, that if you are not pushing it that we should be equal, then it won't happen. So let's try it. So, <laughs> Martin Luther King didn't speak with low voice, so pushing. No, no aggressivity is needed, but 
I have a dream. So, anyway, okay, one more time. Yes. Thank you, and, and keep it up, keep it up, please. It will be a little bit like a repetitive piece of contemporary music. As the one who does not dehumanize others. As the one who does not portray others as dehumanize others. As the one who recognizes that each member of the dehumanized group is a free person who is equally free. As the one who recognizes that dehumanization is the worst form of so-called hate speech as it destroys the moral law that protects humans from violence. As the one who recognizes that, for example, trees should also have rights. As the one who recognizes that whoever creates pictures of dehumanization is not as the one who recognizes that whoever finds that pictures of dehumanization are exotically exciting is not As the one who don't care about the skin color of her lover As the one who don't hide her Roma lover from her family As the one who don't have a head of the family in her family As the emancipated Muslim Roma woman As the Roma Hungarian sex worker girl in Zurich and the richest woman As the one who understands the hardness of intersectionality of being discriminated based on several features As my great grandmother who was the first girl who graduated from high school at Sabatka, as my great grandmother with her nose having had corrected on our family photograph, as the one who recognizes that whoever creates pictures of dehumanization is not, as the Roma girl who has been diligently studying and working since her early childhood, as the little Roma girl in kindergarten with whom the other kids are not playing as their parents told them that they should not play with her for she is Roma. As the parent who does not tell her child who goes to kindergarten that she should not play with the little Roma girl. As the little Jewish Hungarian girl who was sitting next to my mother in the school who until she was deported. As my mother who always rejected non-Roma parents who requested from her to have their children seated not next to a Roma child. As my brother who has been working for integrating schools. As the Roma Hungarian who got bullets shot into her house at the end of the village. As the one who does not call the series of hate crimes against Roma Hungarians as Roma killings. As the one who recognizes that dehumanization is the worst form of so-called hate speech as it destroys the moral law that protects humans from violence. As the head of police who investigates incitement to violence that causes imminent danger for people of color. As the court in Hungary that decided in a hate crime case that Roma Hungarians were not anti-Hungarian. Yeah. As the one who knows that the anti Roma hatred does not insult only Roma, it insults all of us. Yeah. As the one who does not speak about Roma and Hungarian as if the Roma Hungarians could not be Hungarians as well. Yeah. Yeah. As the little Roma Hungarian girl whom the teacher excluded from the class chorus as she allegedly had very ugly voice. Yeah. As the teacher who does not exclude the little Roma girl from the class chorus instead pays special attention to her to make sure that she's happy. Yeah. As the one who does not have prejudices based on negative generalization. Yeah. As the normal person who has Roma friends. Yeah. As the one who does not let anti-Roma speech go without responding to it, does not let it go in her family by her lover or among her friends neither. Yeah. As the one who recognizes that each member of the dehumanized group is a free person who is Literally yeah. free. Yeah. As the one who considers everybody else as yeah. free as herself. Yeah. As the one who knows that yeah. the, the free other is a brother. Yeah. Because if she's not, yeah. then neither you are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. International Roma Day today. Yes. So if you are interested in the local context, Peter has some kind of things that are going on in Budapest today on behalf of discrimination, etc., demonization of Roma. 
Yes, yes, thank you. I, I wanted to mention actually, and that's also why I pushed the subject of entire of dehumanization and discrimination of Roma people, uh, because this is International Roma Day, and uh, there are many things happening. One, which is which may be the easiest uh, to attend, is at 5 p.m. at Octagon in the main lobby of CU. Uh, there is an exhibition opening, uh, artwork of Roma students, students of the Roma Access Programs will be exhibited, I highly recommend, I'm sure it will be really nice. And nearby, in this street on Yarn Street, there are some other happenings like a Romani design fashion show from 4 p.m. If you are interested, let me know and I tell you the details. And also, at night, there are some discussions about Roma rights and, and uh, related gatherings. Uh, one of them is in a place called Aurora in the, in the 8th district, which is sometimes referred to as the Harlem in Budapest. And the uh, Roma student at CU said once that he, just to make you interested in going there more, that she said that when she was looking for an apartment, and there was an apartment there, she asked the person, shall I try to take it? And that person said, don't go there. Jews, gypsies, blacks, migrants, they are all there. So I suggest we go there tonight for this party on International Roma Day. So join Peter for going to the parts of Budapest that as a tourist you might not see because they weren't told the same story. Um, it's now so late and we have to stop at 1.45 uh, as a, a being thankful to our hosts here and those supporting us with the technology and all the other staff we have to stop at time. I have a couple of comments um, and I think I will shorten them all and I can easily because Simon had reinvented the words I had on my some of the words that I had on my on my my slide for the conceptual issues myself. I wanted to just say one word about the interdisciplinary setting here. I think, I hope, we all learn something from the other perspectives. In the future, I, for, for me, this event here should be the first event of a series of initiatives um, to you all invited to continue the discussion, whether we in the end keep the, 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 the top lane of humanization or whether that's getting too muddy or not, that's still kind of part of the interaction. The interaction should ultimately not just be learning from each other, but also kind of uh, in constructive way disagreeing. And we did that already. And I hope we can continue that. And uh, there are still five minutes left. Um, I'm, if nobody has questions or comments, I, I still have a lot. Um, and, but the floor is open.